if you observe, we have the multiples of angle. So we are going to see the trigonometric ratios for multiples of angle. For example, if I want sine 120 degrees, right? Can I write this as sine of 2 into 60 degrees? So if I have a direct formula where I'm able to relate that sine 120 in terms of sine 60, I'll be able to solve the problem faster, right? So that is why we need to start developing some formula for the multiples of angles as well. So I'll show you. First, I'll start with sine of 2a, like how I gave you there. Sine 120, you can write it as sine of 2 into 60, right? So sine 2a, can I write it as sine of a plus a itself? So what is sine of a plus b? It is going to be sin a cos a, basically it is sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. What is b? b is also a only. So what is this basically? Sin a into cos a plus sin a into cos a. It is 2 times sin a into cos a. This is the expression for sin 2a. Okay. But we are not going to stop with this. I will give you another expression also. Okay. So this is one. I will try to represent this in terms of tan. So what I need to do, logic is simple. So whenever you have sine, you need tan, divide and multiply it with cos. So two times sine A into cos A divided by cos A into cos A. Makes sense? Now I will combine these two. I get I get 2 tan A. Cos A into cos A, I'll get cos square A in the numerator. So cos square A can also be written as 1 by secant square A. Cos square A is the same as 1 by secant square A because cos A and secant A are reciprocal of each other. Am I clear with this? So this will be equal to 2 tan A divided by secant square is 1 plus tan square A. So you can write it as 1 plus tan square A. This is another expression. Meaning sin 2A is either 2 sin A into cos A or it is also equal to 2 tan A divided by 1 plus tan square A. So let me write an extra step. So sin 2A is basically 2 sin A into cos A or it is also equal to 2 tan A divided by 1 plus tan square A. Here with this, you are expected to remember this. Okay, 2 sin A cos A mostly we will use this year. 2 tan A by 1 plus tan square A is used next year a lot. In your 12th grade, you will use it in chapters named inverse trigonometric functions. You will use it in your calculus. So at that time, I have seen many of them struggling not understanding this. I will tell you why they do not understand also. After I derive for tan 2a, you will understand where the confusion will start. Next question. We are going to see for cos 2a. So cos 2a can be written as cos of a plus a. Okay. So this is going to be equal to cos a into cos a minus sin a into sin a. So cos a into cos a is cos square a minus sin a into sin a is sin square a. This is the formula. Okay. So sin a into sin a is sin square a. This is one formula. You can do an or here by leaving cos square a as it is and writing sin square a as 1 minus cos square a. When you do this, you get cos square a minus 1, minus of minus is going to be a plus cos square a. So it is going to be 2 cos square a minus 1. So basically, it can either be written as cos square a minus sin square a 
or it can be written as 2 cos square a minus 1 or right cos square a you can write it as 1 minus sin square a minus sin square a so this will be 1 minus of 2 times sin square a either of them is accepted so depending on the problem you will be using the required formula okay but there is a fourth one also so how it happens is it is cos square a minus sin square a we'll try to completely write this in terms of tan so if i have to write this in terms of tan again the same logic multiply and divide it with cos square a right so cos square a by cos square a 1 sin square a by cos square a minus tan square a into cos square a can be written as 1 by secant square a so it will be 1 minus tan square a divided by 1 plus tan square a so this is one formula this is another one this is the third one and this is the fourth one so cos 2a alone has four different ways of expressing okay and it is the most important of all because this formula can be manipulated and you can convert it into many other identities as well are you able to understand so that is why I would suggest cos 2a is very, very, very important for you to remember. So third, tan 2a, this can be written as tan of a plus a, right? So this will be equal to tan a plus tan a by 1 minus tan a into tan a. So tan a plus tan a is going to give you 2 tan a by 1 minus tan square a. See, this is where I want you to concentrate. There is a similar expression for another identity. 2 tan a by 1 plus tan square a, whereas here it is 2 tan a by 1 minus tan square a. I told you, you know, people get confused. There is the reason. They just don't observe where plus will come and where minus will come. Minus will come for tan because you, if you remember, recollect the derivation, it is only three steps. Not even three steps, you finished it in one. Right. What is that we did? Whenever you, we, whenever you want tan to A, what is that you are going to do? You will write it as tan of A plus A. Whenever it is X plus Y, what is the denominator? One minus. So you should remember that minus. So that you will not have the confusion. Okay. This one and the other one are similar. For sin 2a, you have a plus in the denominator, whereas for tan 2a, you have minus in the denominator. Okay. Yeah. See, cot 2a and all generally we don't apply because cot 2a is needed. You will find tan 2a, take the reciprocal your tan. So, if at all you need, what will be the formula? Can you do it in mind and tell me? Cot 2a, cot 2a. Recollect, cot 2a, what is it? Cot a into cot b minus 1 by cot b plus cot a. So replace B with A. What will you get? Concentrate, concentrate. You will be able to get it. You people are not concentrating. Cot square A minus 1 by 2 cot A. You get cot square A minus 1 by 2 cot A. Okay. That's anyways not considered as the identity. Only these three are taken into consideration. So I hope this part is clear, right? So the next one is sin 3a so this is also an identity you need to remember when it crosses 3 all you need to do is in the problem you will manipulate it okay 
so you will remember sin a plus b sin 2a and sin 3a these are the identities you need to remember so sin 3a you can write it as 2a plus a right so sin 2a is going to be sin of 2a plus a is going to be sin 2a cos a plus cos 2a sin a right so sin 2a in terms of sin there is only one identity what is it it's 2 times sin a into cos a this whole thing multiplied with cos a plus for cos 2a there are four identities right among the four first one is cos square minus sin square second one is 2 cos square minus 1 third one is 1 minus 2 sin square so what i'm going to do here is sin 3a i'll completely try to express it in terms of sin only so for that from cos a i'm going to use the identity 1 minus 2 sin square a. i'll use 1 minus 2 sin square a into sin a make sense yes so it is going to be 2 sin a into cos a into cos a is so cos square a i can write it as 1 minus sin square a i repeat cos a into cos a is cos square a cos square a is written as 1 minus sin square a plus the sin a will get multiplied with each term you will have sin a minus 2 sin cube a okay so this will be 2 sin a minus 2 sin cube a plus sin a minus 2 sin cube a so 2 sin a plus sin a is going to give me 3 sin a minus 2 sin cube a minus 2 sin cube a is minus 4 sin cube a and this is the expression for sin 3a there is only one expression and this is expected to be remembered it is 3 sin minus 4 sin cube so you can remember it like this 3s minus 4 s cube okay so look at the fifth one it will be cos 3a so cos 3a is going to be cos of 2a plus a which will be cos 2a into cos a minus sin 2a into sin a so wherever cos 2a comes be careful okay so since you are writing for cos express cos 2a in terms of cos itself so for that i will use the identity 2 cos square a minus 1 into you have cos a minus sin 2a can be written as 2 sin a into cos a the whole multiplied with sin a right so when you multiply it here it will be 2 cos cube a minus cos a minus 2 sin a into sin a is 2 sin square a into cos a okay so this will be 2 cos cube a minus cos a minus 2 into sin square a will be 1 minus cos square a into cos a so this will be 2 cos cube a minus cos a minus observe 2 into 1 into cos a it is 2 cos a minus of minus is plus 2 into cos square a into cos a is 2 cos cube a now combine the terms so 2 cos cube a into 2 cos cube a will be 4 times cos cube a minus cos a minus 2 cos a will be minus 3 cos a so this is going to be the expression for cos 3a if you observe it is exactly the reverse of what you observed in sign so it is 4 c cube minus 3 c there it was 3s minus 4 s cube right it is exactly the reverse so the next one is going to be for tan 3a so tan 3a is going to be equal to tan of 2a plus a right 
So tan of 2a plus a can be written as tan 2a plus tan a, the whole divided by 1 minus tan 2a into tan a. Right. tan a plus tan b by 1 minus tan a tan b. So, directly take the formula for tan 2 and substitute it there. It is going to be 2 tan a divided by 1 minus tan square a plus tan a the whole divided by 1 minus 2 tan a by 1 minus tan square a multiplied with tan a. Clear with this? So, observe. All that we need to do is take LCM. So, it is going to be 2 tan a plus tan a into 1 minus tan square a. So, it is going to be tan a minus tan cube a basically. Just to explain it again, this tan a is getting multiplied with each term. Tan a into 1 minus tan a into tan square a. That's what I wrote it there. The whole divided by 1 minus tan square a, this whole thing divided by, if you observe, 1 minus tan square a is getting multiplied with 1. So, you will write it as it is. 1 minus tan square a minus 2 tan a into tan a minus 2 tan square a, the whole divided by 1 minus tan square a. So, 1 minus tan square a and 1 minus tan square a are gone. So, 2 tan a plus tan a is going to be equal to 3 tan a minus tan cube a, the whole divided by 1, see, minus tan square a minus 2 tan square a is minus 3 tan square a. So, 1 minus 3 tan square a. And this is going to be the expression for tan 3a. So, it is basically 3t minus t cube by 1 minus 3 t square. So, we will see the next set. Okay, We have four more. The set is sin A plus sin B. So, there is a small difference that you need to have in mind. The first one was sin of A plus B. Here it is sin A plus sin B, meaning sin 30 degrees plus sin 60 degree is not the same as sin 90. Right. So, let us do and see. What is sin 30? Sin 60. Right. What is sin 90? So, you add the add these two and see. Is it coming out to be? It will come out as 1 plus root 3 by 2. Right. That is one common mistake that happens again. Okay. As I told, the next set that we are going to see is sin A plus sin B. Okay. I'll do one thing. Just to avoid the confusion, I'll not use A and B. I'll use C and D. Okay. I'll tell you why I'm doing that. So, I'll say sin C plus sin D. Where what I'm going to do here is I will say C is equal to a plus B. I am just substituting C is equal to A plus B and D is equal to A minus B. Okay. So, if I take that and substitute it here, what I get is sin of A plus B plus sin of A minus B. Am I clear with this? Okay. So, what I did is basically I wrote C as sum of two angles, D as difference of two angles. Then I just took those values, put it here. So, when I write sin of A plus B, it is going to be sin A cos B plus cos A sin B plus sin of A minus B is going to be sin A cos B 
minus cos a sin b. If you observe, cos a sin b and cos a sin b will get cancelled, right? So we have sin a cos b plus sin a cos b, which will sum up to give you two times sin a cos b. So it will be two times sin a cos b. But the question says c and d. I should not have a and b here. So I need to bring back the c and d. For that, what I'll do is, if I add these two, a plus b plus a minus b, I'll get c plus d. So if I add these two, a plus b plus a minus b, I'll get c plus d. So what will get cancelled? b and b are gone. 2a is equal to c plus d. So a will be equal to c plus d by 2. Similarly, if I subtract these two, right? If I subtract these two in the sense a plus b minus of a minus b, I get c minus d. So a and a are gone. 2b will be equal to c minus d. b will be equal to c minus d divided by 2. So take these two values and plug it here. Answer will be 2 sine of c plus d divided by 2 into cos of c minus d divided by 2. So you get 2 sine of c plus d divided by 2 cos of c minus d divided by 2. And this is going to be the expression for sine c plus sine d. So I just want to tell you one point, whenever we have some of the trigonometric ratios, all we do is we take C as A plus B, we take D as A minus B and then start. Sin C minus sin D. Okay, again, you will take C to be A plus B, you will take D to be A minus B. Actually, this identity came from the reverse order. Since we know sine of a plus b and sine of a minus b, what will happen if you add them and subtract them? That is a meaning. Okay. So here what is going to happen? You will have sine of a plus b minus sine of a minus b. Sine a cos b plus cos a sine b minus sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Clear with this? So what you get cancelled? Sin A cos B and sin A cos B are gone. So you have a minus here, right? So sin A cos B and sin A cos B get cancelled. So what is that you are left out with? You will have cos A sin B minus of minuses plus so you have 2 cos a sin b, right? But we know that when c is equal to a plus b and d is equal to a minus b, we get a is equal to c plus d by 2 and b is equal to c minus d by 2. Take these values, substitute it here. So this will be equal to 2 cos of c plus d divided by 2 sin of c minus d divided by 2. Yeah. So just to tell you the difference, observe, when you have sin C plus sin D, it will be 2 sin cos. So when I say sin cos, I'm following an order. Sin will have a bigger angle, cos will have a smaller angle. How did I say which is bigger and which is smaller? Obviously, sum is bigger, difference is smaller. So having the same thing in mind, when you have sin C minus sin D, you will have 2 cos sin. Cos of bigger angle, sine of smaller angle. That order is important. Okay. So this is the expression for sine C minus sine.